大家好，我叫赵云，呃，以前我住在杭州四月当家庭教师。I showed up at Beijing Airport and. My host family sent someone to guide me to my next gate, and she gave me like fifty, twenty bucks just to buy a quick meal. And、oh. I was, I was pretty confident that oh, this is going to be easy. I can just go order some food. And I ran into、uh, the first Chinese restaurant I saw in the airport, and immediately like all these people came up to me and they're like. Speaking and I couldn't understand anything. They showed me a menu and it didn't have any English on it. It was all Chinese, and I was like, the only thing I could think to say is, "Whoa, yeah, I'm hungry." Like the childish way of saying I'm hungry. I was embarrassed and terrified. Like that, how am I going to get through this? This is so new and so different to me. I had always had an interest in. Like East Asian cultures,、um, language and art, movies, but I was more focused on Japanese culture and Japanese language.、Um, what happened is I、um, started my first semester at Northern Michigan University, and I planned to study abroad in Japan and study Japanese. And when I got to Northern, they had dropped their Japanese language courses. So I was like, oh, well, what am I going to do? What do you guys have to offer? And they're like, well, we have Mandarin. Courses and I'm like, all right, I'll try it. My professor at Northern Michigan University、uh, found an opportunity for me、uh, to go live with a host family and teach their two kids English. It was sort of like they'll buy your plane tickets and they'll pay for your passport and they'll give you a salary and you can go live there. And I was like, wow, that's like a one in a million opportunity. I met a couple friends while going to the language school, and we usually would we go to the touristy sites in Hangzhou because, like, Shi Shi West Lake is、um, a very big tourist spot. We would go to the underground shopping markets, or we would walk around the lake, and we would do boat rides. We went out to the movies、um, once or twice, which was really fun. Went clubbing in China because they have a、uh, lower drinking age, and I was 18 at the time, <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> I think the most interesting thing, of course, is the food. You just kind of open your mind. You go in, you're going to find the best tasting food: the dumplings and the noodles, and the street food is just—it's so different from anything you have here. I really like Hangzhou food. During Chinese New Year, we went down to the southern island of Hainan, which is what they like to call the Hawaii of China. Um, and we went on like a tropical rainforest tour, and we went to this island called Monkey Island, where there was monkeys free roaming everywhere, and、mm, fresh growing mangoes on the trees. It was that was a whole other experience from Hangzhou, the city where I was, because it's a whole different climate and culture. Even within the same country, they have so many different dialects and so many different cultures. And I thought that was a really cool experience to be able to, you know, it's kind of like two trips in one. <laughs> I was working with two kids,、um, Joy, who was seven, and George, who was ten. Most of my time was spent with the kids. I was、um, teaching them English, taking them to their extracurricular classes and activities. For them, the kids they want to play, and it was kind of something definitely pushed on them by their parents to learn the language. I noticed college students that I met in the area were super eager eager to speak English with me, and it was one of their biggest focuses was learning to become fluent in English. And then you get up to the older generations, people in their forties, fifties, and they don't speak it at all. I think it's definitely something that's becoming more new.、Um, people really in 
our age group and our generation are starting to realize that being able to speak English is going to give them a lot of opportunities. A lot of the younger generation could speak pretty well, which was really impressive to me and it made me realize I don't know any people in the US who can speak Chinese very well. So I, that's, I wanted to bring that back here. Two months after coming back from China, I had been working at a Chinese restaurant and I got an opportunity from working there and people finding out that I could speak Chinese. Um, I got a call to work at a Chinese uh, research company. Uh, it was a subsidiary of a large firm in China called Pu Tianbao. And they were working with the University of Michigan Tech to develop technology to clean China's industrial wastewater. And they wanted a research assistant or like front desk receptionist that would be able to speak the language and work with the researchers there. Yeah, I, I got to learn how to speak professionally and translate documents and learn more about science terminology. It was really cool. So that definitely helped me maintain the language. I realized that I needed to be in a bigger city with more diversity. I came down to Ann Arbor to visit a friend and we went to the Natural History Museum and we went to UMA uh, at University of Michigan and I was blown away. I actually cried. <laughs> I was just amazed that I had only seen these things in textbooks before and on the internet and I had never seen them in person and that this place would be able to offer all of these different resources to me on top of all the diversity that Ann Arbor and UMA has to offer. Um, and I was like, I need to move down there now. I need to transfer and go to school downstate. And that's when I decided. Moving to Hangzhou was sort of a temporary thing. I packed up a suitcase and went, but then actually leaving the Upper Peninsula and moving down to Ann Arbor was really hard for me. It was terrifying, honestly. Um, the cost of living up there is much lower than here. And I was worried like, how am I going to afford this? How am I going to make it down there? But it was it was so worth it in the end. Uh, just because down here in Southeast Michigan, there's so many more job opportunities and education opportunities. And once you make that initial step, it can be scary. But in the end, it's you know it's really worth it for moving on to the next step in your life, I guess. WCC by far is the best school I've been to since I started WCC. I became an officer of Chinese Club. Through that, I've reached out to the International Student Association and hey we have this club available these are students who want to learn about your culture and your language and they would love to share this with you and I think that's kind of my biggest goal through WCC's Chinese club is to try to connect the bridge between our Chinese international students and Chinese people in the community and the students here who are really interested in learning about it and being able to share that. I'm afraid that I might still be in the Upper Peninsula if I had never gone to China. And I'm afraid that I would never have any of the learning experiences with working at a Chinese company and making friends from different cultures. And I don't think I'd have any of that if it wasn't for being able to make that jump and take that trip internationally. I've recently been accepted to University of Michigan. Um, I plan to continue to pursue a bachelor's degree in international studies with a concentration in political and economic development, and my real goal is to bridge the gap between Chinese culture and U.S. culture and just kind of share a better understanding of China and the people and what a good relationship with them has to offer, especially, I mean, through international policy and international relations. I feel like the biggest obstacle is fear and people not understanding a different culture from their own, and so I think it's really important to you know, broaden everyone's horizons of, hey, these are people just like you, their culture is very interesting, it'd be great to learn about it. And from that, there can be a lot of opportunities. So I'm hoping to go into international business. Generally, I mean, of course, US media just kind of covers policies going on in China and big business, but it doesn't really talk about the day-to-day -to -day life of middle-class citizens in China. I think in media, we just kind of cover bad stories. Most people I talked to about the opportunity I had were scared for me. They're like, this isn't safe. 
this is your China's a dangerous place. What if you don't come back? I think if those are your fears holding you back, throw them away. Like you need to go to a place to learn about it, and you'll realize that people are people everywhere. And I think it'll really just open your eyes up to the beauty in all of the different cultures in the world.、Um, and learning a language, in my experience from learning this language, is go to the place where the language is from. Immerse yourself in the culture, interact with the people, and you'll see how eager these people are to speak with you and help you. It's the quickest and easiest way to learn a language, and it's the most enriching. Yeah.